Okay, so we're back today with a very exciting and simple tutorial. We're gonna be making a Chinese teapot in Blender. Now, this is my original blend file here, but the tutorial you're about to watch is gonna be the exact thing. We're gonna model the teapot, we're gonna add these materials, we're gonna add the lighting, we're gonna add in the camera. The only thing different is that in my original, I just added some quick and dirty texture here to my um, floor, but that's about it. Um, so yeah, I'll be uploading that to my Patreon, but what we're gonna be making here today is this, you can see, just a ton of fun learning how to make a teapot um, relatively beginner friendly, just using some simple modeling techniques. So let's jump in. I really hope you guys enjoy and thank you for the time you're taking to watch this. Okay, so with a new scene open up in Blender, let's select all the default objects and we're gonna press delete on the keyboard and then we'll go shift A and let's just go to our mesh drop down and a UV sphere is gonna serve itself very well for this purpose. We're gonna go ahead and add it in. And let's jump into our front of a graphic view, like so. And in our front of a graphic view, we're gonna just go into our edit workspace and we'll just make sure to select everything. So I'm just pressing A to make sure everything's active. I'm gonna go G, Z and move it up to here. So the bottom three or four rows here, it's kind of like sitting where the floor is. And you wanna make sure that you have them all selected like this, okay? Make sure it's all the way through like that. And then what you're gonna do, you're gonna go S, Z, and zero, and then hit enter. And then go G, Z, and move it up till it's sitting on the floor like that. Now, now we have the bottom. If you want to, you could always just select this bottom vertex, and with proportional editing, just kind of bulge it up a little bit. I'll turn proportional editing off for now. So this is kind of like the basic shape, and what we wanna do here is kind of like have the spout over here, and then the handle over here. Now that's way off scale, but you kind of get the idea. And then we have the lid kind of sitting here at the top like that. So since the um, handle is the more tricky part to make, we'll start with that. So what I'm gonna do is let's go into our right orthographic view by pressing three on the number pad. And up here, it should say right orthographic, right? And what we wanna do is you wanna come up here and select this vertex right about here or maybe one down, maybe this one here. There we go, so this one right here. So you can go one, two, three, four spaces down like that, right over here. Then go Control plus to grow the selection. And then what you're gonna do, you're gonna go into your front or graphic view again. And this time you're gonna go E to extrude and X and extrude it out in the X like so, and then click, and then S to scale a little bit and click, and then G, just kind of move it up slightly, like so. Maybe rotate it just a little bit. Then go Control R, hovering over here, double click to add in a loop. And then let's go into our wireframe and let's just select these verts over here and kind of move them in a little bit closer and maybe move these guys out like so. And then what we have now is sort of like this shape. So we're gonna go over here and select these two faces. And holding in shift, let's just select these guys as well, these faces, just like that. And let's go enable proportional editing and we're gonna go S, Y, and roll the middle mouse button down, just influence it like this and kind of just scale it down on the Y a little bit. And then select these two faces down here, turn off proportional editing. And now we're gonna go E to extrude and we're gonna extrude it down and click R to rotate it a little bit, click S to scale. And then E to extrude, go down to about here and click and then R to rotate, click G to move it in. And we're gonna move it to about here and then let's go to our vertex select option. And you're gonna see over here is another vertex right in the middle here. I'm gonna select it and go control plus. And you're gonna have four faces selected like this. Then in your front orthographic view, you're just gonna go E to extrude and click R to rotate like this and click. And then S to scale and Y. So S, Y to scale on the Y like so. And if we have to, we can always just get our face select and just select these two faces. And you wanna kind of just move them till they're sitting about here like this. And then we're gonna go over here, Control R, hovering over this edge, Control R, double click. And now go to your face select. And now you have these two faces over here and holding and shift select these two faces over here. And then you can go Control E or Command E and go bridge edge loops. And now they're bridged like that. How cool is that? So now what we'll do is we'll come in here, control R up here to add an extra loop. I'm gonna to toggle on the X-ray up here for now, but you can work in wireframe. I'm gonna to go to my vertex select option 
and I'll just use proportional editing. So I'm enabling it and I'll roll the middle mouse button as I'm working to influence the fall off and the shape. So we're just kind of like giving it this sort of shape like this. And over here, I'm gonna go Control R, double click to add in another loop, move it out. Control R over here, double click, G to move it out a bit. And all I'm doing here is just kind of like really roughly kind of shaping this like so. There we go. So what I'll do, I'll toggle off the X-ray. Shift Alt, left click to loop select this loop over here in the middle. Control Plus, just to grow the selection a few times. Something like that. And once you have it selected, just go over to your Smooth tool. Click on it and then just use the gizmo and just kind of like smooth it out ever so slightly. And then turn off proportional editing. And now we've made this nice looking handle. It has some nice topological flow here to it. There we go, like that. So that's the more tricky part. From here, I think it gets a lot simpler. So let's go into our left orthographic view. So that's control and then number three on the numpad. Or you can just go up here to view and then viewport and go to the right orthographic. Oops, I meant to go left. <laughs> viewport, left orthographic, there we go. So what we'll do now is we'll kind of come here. You see one, two, three, four main verts. And then from here, and downwards, we'll go to about five verts down like this. Let's go Control plus to grow to selection. Control plus to grow to selection. And what we might have to do is just press C and then click the middle mouse button. Maybe it's just deselect these guys like so. That looks about right. And with that done, we're gonna go into our front orthographic view. We'll go E to extrude and click S to scale. Click. G to move it up a little bit, and then E to extrude, click, S to scale, R to rotate, and then E to extrude, click, R to rotate, click, maybe S to scale, right about here, and then just go X and delete the faces. Then we're gonna go Shift, Alt, and left click to loop select these edges. Shift, Alt, S, and move your mouse to round it out. Shift. Alt and click on this loop, Shift Alt S to round it out. Select this loop over here, Shift Alt S, round it out. And then with that still selected, go Control Plus, just once to grow to selection. With your Smooth tool, just click and drag and just smooth it out like so. And then from here, we're gonna go Shift Alt, left click on this loop here. We'll go S, Z, zero to flatten it and click. And then in the front view, we'll just rotate it again. And now we've kind of fixed that a little bit. If you want to go control R wherever you need to and double click and just add in some more loops. And once you have that done, what you can do is you can enable the Y symmetry up here and then enable proportional editing. And then you can just come here and just kind of move this out and just shape it a little bit. And it'll happen up over on the other side like that. This is kind of what we have so far, looking pretty good. You can shape it however you want, but you kind of get the idea here. There we go. Now what we're gonna do is enable our X-ray. Let's go ahead and click and drag and select these top faces here. I'm gonna turn off proportional editing. And we're gonna go E to extrude them up a bit, E to extrude again and click. And then E to extrude and S to scale. Click and then E to extrude and Z and extrude it down and click. And then go X and delete the faces. So what we have is something that looks like this. Okay, I'm gonna turn off uh, X-ray. Then we're gonna go over to our modifiers. We're gonna add modifier search, type in sub, and let's give it a subdivision surface. Okay, and now we can kind of see this is what we have. So now let's also come over here, shift alt, left click on this loop. E to extrude S to scale a little bit, click. E to extrude S to scale a little bit more, click. And then in the front view, you can just go into wireframe and go E to extrude in a little bit, E to extrude in a little bit and maybe scale it, E to extrude in a little bit, scale it. Now, because we're not gonna see the inside of the teapot, we don't really have to give it a solidify. It can only kind of like fake that it has solidity by just extruding these sort of end opening bits in a little bit like that should be fine. So you can see it doesn't really hurt anything too much. And um, we don't want to go too thick. We want it to have kind of like a very delicate kind of feel. And that's why we're kind of going a little bit more thin walled. Okay, so back in edit mode, 
I'm gonna go shift alt left click to loop select this edge over here. I'm gonna go shift D to duplicate and right click to let go. E to extrude as to scale and let's go like that. Click. E to extrude and Z, let's extrude up a little bit and click. E to extrude as to scale and go in a little bit and then click. And then G, Z kind of move it up slightly. And then E to extrude and let's go G, let's go G, Z, move it down. And you can see we have this sort of like weird thing happening here. So what we might have to do is just undo that. Press A to select everything, go Alt N and just recalculate the outside normals like that. Now if we go Shift Alt and left click on this edge over here, we can now go E to extrude and Z, extrude it down to Z and click and go S to scale slightly. And then E to extrude and Z to go up, click, S to scale. And I can see I've kind of made a mess here. Um, I'm just gonna go Shift Alt, left click, just loop select this edge and go X. I'm just gonna dissolve that edge like that. That should be fine. But now we kind of like have this shape like this, as you can see. So I'm gonna select this edge again over here. And in the front view, I'm gonna go E to extrude, extrude it up a little bit, click S to scale down. And by the way, I need to turn off the Y mirroring here. That's important. Okay, we don't want that. And then I'm gonna go E to extrude S to scale again, click, move it up just a little bit. And then from here, you can kind of extrude out and up and scale it and make sort of whatever sort of shape you want at the top for like a knob like this, like just a very simple sort of approach to that. Okay, and that's all there is really to it. I'm gonna tab back out, I'm gonna right click, go shade smooth. And here you can see we have a very simple Chinese teapot. Now the cool thing about this is even though you've already modeled everything, you can always come in here and use proportional editing and you can kind of scale things and adjust things however you want. You can really customize the shape. You can work on the handle. You can refine things with proportional editing really well. Now that we have this sort of topology established on our teacup. Okay, so I'm gonna tab back out. This is what we have and make sure to save as you're working. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna go maybe from a top view like this, we're gonna go shift A, we're gonna add in a plane, S to scale it up nice and big. Then we're gonna go shift A, we're gonna go add in a camera. Zero and another pad to go into camera. G and middle mouse button just to zoom back out. And I'm gonna go a focal length of 130 on my camera. I'll place the camera right about here. And you can do this however you want, but it's kind of what I'm going for, like this. Then I'm gonna go over to my render options. I'm gonna change it to cycles. If you have a GPU, I recommend you use that. But we're also gonna come here to the max samples and only make it 45 and make sure denoising is enabled. Now we're gonna go shift A, we're gonna to go to our light options, add in an area light and go G, Z and move it up. And with this area light, let's go to our light properties, give it a strength of 140, give it a nice big size. And then let's go to camera view and go Z and go rendered. And it's at this point where you can kind of like increase or decrease the strength. But for me, I'm gonna go ahead, change the 3D cursor, the transform pivot to 3D cursor. And I'm gonna go shift D to duplicate and then double tap R just to duplicate that light. And I'm gonna have it coming from other places like this as well. So maybe from the sides a little bit. There we go, that's looking really good. So now let's select our pot. Let's go over to our materials and go new. And let's just call it T pot. And if you wanted to, you can just come here to the base color and kind of make it sort of like a greenish kind of color. You can increase, decrease the roughness to make it shiny. Maybe make the value a little bit darker. And under the subsurface, you can give it a little bit of weight. And already that's a nice looking teacup. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna step it up just a little bit by going to our shading workspace. In our camera view, we're gonna go Z and go rendered. And let's come over here and go shift a search and get a noise and get a noise texture. Plug the color into the base color and then go shift a search and get a ramp. Place the color ramp on here and then drag this black value up. Make it sort of like a darkish kind of green. Drag this value down over here and make it a lighter type of minty green like this. Increase the detail to 12 and the roughness bring that up as well. So now you have something that looks like this. I might just bring the scale down to two and already that's looking a lot better, but we can go shift a search and get a ramp. 
plug the color into here and then shift a search and get a bump. And then let's plug the color from this new ramp into the height and the bump into the top normal here. And now we can actually take this value here and drag it just to adjust our bump. And we're also gonna take the strength to 0 0.06, like that. We're also gonna take the weight to 0.7 on our subsurface. And now you can see this is kind of like what we have. Pretty cool, you can always come here and add in more handles and just refine that a little bit by adding some more variation, a little bit more contrast in some of the points. But I think that's kind of looking really cool. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make sure to save and let's just go render and just render this image. And there we have it, a very simple Chinese tea that looks really nice. And I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial in Blender. Um, I will be uploading my original to Patreon, which is pretty much the exact same thing as the tutorial we did today. I only spent a little bit more time on the lighting, but it's the exact same thing and exact same material. So I really hope you guys have enjoyed this and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.